तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविभिरीडित कलमशापहम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती भूरीदा जना ओ लॉर्ड योर नेक्टर लाइक वर्ड्स रिलीव द बर्निंग मिजरी ऑफ एफ्लिक्टेड सोल्स योर वर्ड्स विच पॉइट्स ऑफ संग इन वर्सेस डिस्ट्रॉय द सिंस ऑफ द वर्ल्डली पीपल फॉर एवर ब्लेसड आर दे who hear of your vast glory blessed indeed are those who speak of you how unparalleled is their bounty chapter 36 of the gospel of shri ramakrishna the master's birthday a very auspicious day indeed but actually the birthday fell on monday so like us on the weekend sunday they have the celebration because all will be available on that day the householder duty devotees especially sunday february 22 1885 shri ramakrishna was sitting on the north east veranda outside his room at dakshineshwar it was at about 8 o'clock in the morning many devotees including narendra rakhal girish baburam and surendra were present they were celebrating the master's birthday which had fallen on the previous wednesday m arrived and saluted him the master signed to him to take a seat near him even now um, shri ramakrishna's birthday if it falls on monday tuesday wednesday they have it the very next sunday the celebration in belur math public celebration lakhs and lakhs of people come so crowded varieties of uh, program mainly the music the kirtan and these kirtan are sung by the, the ancient uh, devotees of mother kali the family people of their for example ram prasad um ka ni uh, kamala kant all like this very ancient, must be 17 16 17th century but the family and the tradition is there because his family is near halishaya ram prasad so people come and because shri ramakrishna loud kirtan so they were big celebration used to be there and it's there and kirtan is the main important feature and also dramas depicting the epics all that it's the same thing is also going on it's a tradition from shri ramakrishna's time it has come among them uh, narendra rakhal baburam they all are monastic disciples the future monastic disciples and girish surendra further will be getting many more ramchandran household devotees very devoted to shri ramakrishna narottam was singing kirtan shri ramakrishna was in partial ecstasy there's no much philosophy i just go ahead reading you will enjoy try try to be at that place most of you have visited dakshineshwar i suppose very beautiful place if you not make it at once in lifetime we have to The subject was Krishna's meeting with his cowherd devotees in the meadow. Krishna had not yet arrived. The cowherd boys were restless for him. One of them said that Mother Yashoda was preventing Krishna from coming. Balai, that is Balaram, said that Mother Yashoda was preventing Krishna from coming. And he is determined. In a determined voice, he said that he would bring Krishna with the sound of his horn. Balai's love for Krishna knew no bounds. The music went on. Suddenly, Sri Ramakrishna's eyes fell on Narendra, who was sitting very near him. Because Narendra was the very dearest disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. Almost, he was like uh, another self of him. 
from sometimes Sri Ramakrishna would say, you are Prakriti, I am Prakriti, you are Purusha. So intense was their understanding and love. And Sri Ramakrishna's mind only to certain extent, other than Holy Mother, Narendra could fathom the depth of Sri Ramakrishna's mind. Not everybody, a gifted disciple. So naturally, Sri Ramakrishna was very, very fond of him. So as soon as his eyes fell on him, he stood up and went into Samadhi. He stood there, touching Narendra's knee with his foot. Regaining consciousness, he took his seat again. Narendra left the room, lest the show of love should be there. So he just walked away. Swami, I mean, Narendra was very particular. He, he always kept an eye that it should not overwhelm him. It was a deep love. It's a different, it's a mystic love, mystical love. The music went on. Sri Ramakrishna whispered to Baburam, there is kheer in the room. Give Narendra some. That is condensed milk, you know, not the shop one. Very nicely, it's condensed. It's a, it's a sweet a delicacy. So he's saying, give to Narendra. Did the master see Narendra as an embodiment of God? So that's the uh, nature of the love. Sri Ramakrishna always saw the divine. And his love was not ordinary love which we human beings have. Once, uh, Narendra used to chid him for this. If you keep on thinking of me so much, love me, at last when you, you will be born as Narendra. Because Bharat Raja, thinking of the deer, in his next birth, he was born as a deer. So if you think of me like this, you will be born. So immediately Sri Ramakrishna, the child of the Divine Mother, would go to the temple inside the shrine and tell Mother Kali, Mother, Narendra, Narendra says so. He is a man of righteousness, truthful. And what does he say about this? I am a bit concerned. The mother, Kali, would say, don't worry. He is a young boy. He doesn't know. You see Narayana in him. That is why you love him. The moment you won't see, you wouldn't even look at him. So immediately, he would come back and say, you rascal, you confuse me like anything. I see divine Lord in you. That is why Divine Mother says that I love you. The, the day I won't see the divine, I wouldn't even look at your face. So that was the relationship between Sri Ramakrishna and Narendra. After the Kirtan, Sri Ramakrishna returned to his room. Tenderly, he began to feed Narendra with sweets. It was Girish's belief that God himself had been born in the person of Sri Ramakrishna. Girish to the master. Your ways are like Krishna's. He too pretended many things to his mother Eshoda. Master. True. It was because Krishna was an incarnation of God. See, he's accepting that he's an incarnation of God. When God is born as a man, he acts that way. You see, Krishna easily lifted the hill of Govardhan with his hand. But he made Nanda believe that he found it very hard to carry the footstool. He can carry the I mean, Govardhan hill on the tip of his finger on this. But he found it so difficult, the little one, you know, trying his hard. To get the seat, the father will have his dinner or whatever it is. So footstool he is bringing with great difficulty, can't carry, you know. So tender little boy. He can pretend both ways. I mean, this way. Girish, yes. Yes, sir. I have understood you now. Ramakrishna was sitting on the small couch. It was about 11 o'clock. Ram and other devotees wanted to dress him in a new cloth. The master said, no, no. Pointing to an English educated man, he said, what he will he say about it? So he's feeling shy. At the uh, earnest request of the devotees, he said, well, since you insist, I shall have to agree. The devotees were arranging the master's meal in the room. He asked Narendra to sing. Narendra sang. In dense darkness, O mother, thy formless beauty sparkles. Therefore, the yogis meditate in a dark mountain cave. In the lap of boundless dark on Mahanirvana's 
waves are born, peace flows, serene and inexhaustible. Taking the form of the void, see, taking the form of the void in the robe of the darkness wrap. Who art thou, mother, seated alone in the shrine, in the shrine of Samadhi? From the lotus, lotus of thy fierce scattering feet flash thy love's lightnings. Thy spirit face shines forth with laughter terrible and loud. This is the formless aspect of Mother Kali. It's a beautiful song. Nibhida Adhare Matur Chamake Arupa Rashi. It's a beautiful song. As Narendra sang the line, Who art thou, mother, seated alone in the shrine of Samadhi? Sri Ramakrishna went into deep Samadhi and lost all of the consciousness. After a long time, when he was regaining partial consciousness, the devotee seated him on the carpet and placed a plate of food before him. Still overcome with divine emotion, he began to eat the rice with both hands. His mind hasn't come to the normal consciousness. Very difficult to behave normally like us. He's taking the food with both hands, maybe not able to take even. He said to Bhavanath, feed me. Because of his ecstatic, ecstatic mood, he could not use his own right hand. Bhavanath began to feed him. Sri Ramakrishna could not, would eat very little. Ram said to him, Nitya Gopal will eat from your plate. See, by the time Sri Ramakrishna's consciousness was coming down, he was slowly regaining to the normal consciousness. Master, why? Why from my plate? Ram, why not? Nitya Gopal was also in an ecstatic mood. He is a devotee of Sri Ramakrishna. The master put a muscle or two in his mouth with his own hand. Some devotees from Kannagar arrived by boat. They entered Sri Ramakrishna's room singing Kirtan. Afterwards, they went out to take some refreshments. So Ramakrishna's room had two doors. One from outside, one from the inner, inner courtyard of the Kali temple. And the room never had a lock or anything. People could come and people could go at any time. There was nothing to hide. He was open. They, anyone could come to him at any time. He could, they could, could have the access over him. And so these people came a group of people and started singing Kirtan and then after that they went to have the refreshment. Narottam was in the room, the one who previously sang. The master said to him and the other devotees, the music of Konnagar devotees was dull, dull. The music should be so lively as to make everyone dance. One should sing a song like this. See how the all Nadia is shaking under the waves of Gauranga's love. Some such, the music should uh, invoke appropriate emotions in the listeners. What happens is too much of importance is given to the uh, tune and the other. Of course, it all should be there. Sri Ramakrishna was very particular. If something it if it went wrong, he would be very much disturbed. That is true. But then when the problem with music is you start thinking that you are singing to the divine, later on you end up with entertaining the audience. So audience are replaced by God. But if it was, if it is to God, then the music will certainly evoke proper emotions of the song. So Sri Ramakrishna was not very happy with that um, kirtan. The devotees were taking the prasad. It was a sumptuous feat. That's one thing with Sri Ramakrishna's birthday. Sri Ramakrishna said to him, haven't you invited the Mukherjis? Asked Surendra to feed the musicians. See, when Sri Ramakrishna was in Samadhi, he was not aware of anything, let alone the world. He was not aware of his own body, about his own clothes. If the clothes fall, fell, he wouldn't even know. But 
when he was in the normal consciousness, everything in detail, he would make sure that everyone was fed and he was very, very courteous. Whoever came to him, if somebody came, he would speak and entertain the people. Please have a smoke, have a bitter leaf. Please give him a seat. Very courteous, very courteous. The master to Narendra. Where you are, anyway, turning to Ram Lal, and he was also had a wonderful uh, sense of humor. The musician Mahendra of Sinthi arrived. Sorry, the physician Mahendra of Sinthi arrived. The master, smiling, asked Rakhal by a sign to have the physician examine his pulse. See, all everything make use of the people. Turning to Ramlal, he said, and the master said, be friendly with Girish Ghosh, then you will get a free ticket to the theater. Narendra had been talking a long time with Hazra on the port. Since his father's death, Narendra had been having financial worries. He entered the room and took the seat. The master to Narendra, were you with Hazra? Both of you are in the same boat. You know the saying about the two friends, you are away from the, your country and he is away from his beloved. So both are sad because one is away from the country, another one is away from the beloved. Why? Hajra too needs 1500 rupees. So he is also just in need of money and Narendra also is in need of money for the family. So they are very understanding. They sympathize with each other's uh, difficulties and they are very friendly. You know, I sympathize with your difficulty. You sympathize with my difficulty. This is always happens in the world. Sugriva's so wife was abducted by uh, Wali and Sita was abducted. Rama was sympathetic and Sugriva was said he could understand what people go. So like that. Hajra says, Narendra has acquired 100% sattva. Though still there is in him a pink glow of rajas. You know, sattva means pure white. Rajas means reddish. A slight pinkness is there in Narendra. He is evaluating the gunas of everybody. And But I have 125% of pure sattva. See, this uh, Hazra was a very funny fellow. And Sri Ramakrishna had all type of devotees. Sometimes he, put, he would put uh, Sri Ramakrishna in great trouble. But then these people are there as a test. Only when people of such sort are there, still you keep your mind firmly in God. That is the strength. If everyone is good and everything is happy, everything is going smoothly, there's no fun. You have tough people with you to manage. Still, you can concentrate. And meditate on God. That's wonderful. Isn't it? Such people were there with him. I say to Hazra, you indulge in reasoning only. That is why you are so dry. He retorts, no, I am dry because I drink the nectar of sun. All sorts of foolish things. Speaking of pure bhakti, I say to Hazra, a real devotee does not pray to God for money or riches. That was one thing. Many people do not know. That when we pray, we shouldn't ask God anything. A certain person told me very frankly, Mataji, I never knew that we shouldn't ask God anything in our prayers. I learned it only in Vedanta. It's not that God will not give or that you shouldn't ask. You can ask. But thereby, you put yourself below the, uh, what do you call, proper range. For example, God is ready to give, but it is better to ask for devotion. Going to a king and you ask, can I have a big pumpkin, please? Just imagine going and asking a king some pumpkins and eggplants. A king can give you a lot more than that, but ask for pumpkin and brinjal, eggplants. No, you ask better things. So to, when we pray to God, Let's not pray for anything because he is able to give something very precious which none can give. That is love to his 
towards him if we can pray only for pure love at times because god is our the more we feel that god is our own it doesn't matter sometimes it so happens in our spiritual life so much where for everything we want god so that's a it's a state of mind but it is always good to pray to god only for pure devotion so this is this we take home today that love god sincerely and ask nothing but pure devotion love faith and knowledge thank you So now we'll commence the memorial service for Mrs. Saraswati Queenie Naidu, our dear departed devotee and friend. We start with some chanting by the nuns. Then you're invited to come up and share your memories. The family will start with up right there. Yeah. Then after the sharing of the memories, there's a PowerPoint presentation. I've gathered together quite a few photos over many years of both Mr. and Mrs. Naidu. And then we'll conclude by listening to a guided meditation by Rabir Prabhuji Gurajaya Prana Mataji, who was such a, an important figure in Mr. and Mrs. Naidu's lives after they came here from South Africa. So now I'll invite the nuns to change We are going to chant the hymn which Mr. and Mrs. Naidu loved. And uh, yesterday was Swami Virajananda's birthday. The composer of this hymn is Swami Virajananda. Brahma Rupa Madhi Madhya Sesha Sarva Bhasakam Bhava Shatka Hina Rupa Nitya Satya Madhvayam Vang Manoti Gocharam Chaneti Neti Bhavitam Tamna Mami Deva Deva Rama Krishna Bishwaram Aditi Abhiharam Suradi Daitya Nashakam Sadhu Shishta Kamadam Mahi Subhara Harakam Swatmarupatatvakam Yuge Yuge Chadarshitam Tamna Mami Deva Deva Rama Krishna Bishwaram Sarva Bhuta Sarga Karma Sutra Bandha Karanam Jnana Karma Papa Punya Tara Tamya Sadhanam Buddhi Vasa Sakshi Rupa Sarva Karma Bhasanam Tamna Mami Deva Deva Rama Krishna Bishwaram Sarva Jeeva Papa Nasha Karanam Bhaveshwaram Sri Kritam Chagar Bhavasa Dehadana Bidrisham Yapitam Swalila Yacha Yena Divya Jeevanam Tamna Mami Deva Deva Rama Krishna Bishwaram Tulya Loshta Kanchanam Chahiyane Adhigatam Strishunitya Matri Rupa Shakti 
ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭಾವ ಭಾವುಕ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭುಕ್ತಿ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಶುದ್ಧ ಬುದ್ಧಿದಾಯಕ ತಂ ನಮಿ ದೇವ ದೇವ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೀಶ್ವರ ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮಗಮ್ಯ ಮೂಲ ಸತ್ಯ ತತ್ವದೇಶಕ ಸಿದ್ಧ ಸರ್ವ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಸಾಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ವರ್ಜಿತ ಸರ್ವಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಮರ್ಮದರ್ಶಿ ಸರ್ವಿನ್ನಿರಕ್ಷರ ತಂ ನಮಿ ದೇವ ದೇವ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೀಶ್ವರ ಚಾರು ದರ್ಶ ಕಾಲಿಕಾಸು ಗೀತ ಚಾರು ಗಾಯಕ ಕೀರ್ತನೆಷು ಮತ್ತವಚ್ಚ ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾವ ವಿಹಲ ಸುಪದೇಶ ಗಾಯಕ ಹಿ ಶೋಕತಾಪವಾರಕ ತಂ ನಮಿ ದೇವ ದೇವ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೀಶ್ವರ ಪಾದ ಪದ್ಮ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಶಾಂತಿ ಸೌಖ್ಯದಾಯಕ ಸತ್ತ ಚಿತ್ತ ಭಕ್ತ ಸೂನು ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿರ್ತವರ್ಧಕ ದಂಬಿ ದರ್ಪದಾರಣ ತು ನಿರ್ಭಯ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ದೇವ ದೇವ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೀಶ್ವರ ಪಂಚ ವರ್ಷ ಬಾಲ ಭಾವಯುಕ್ತ ಸರ್ವಲೋಕರಂಜನ ಭವಾಬ್ಧಿ ಸಂಗ ಭಂಜನ ಶಾಂತಿ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ಸದ್ಮ ಜೀವ ಜನ್ಮ ಭೀತಿ ನಾಶನ ತಂ ನಮಿ ದೇವ ದೇವ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೀಶ್ವರ ಧರ್ಮ ಹಾನಹಾರಕ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮ ಕರ್ಮವಾರಕ ಲೋಕಧರ್ಮ ಚಾರಣ ಚರ್ವಧರ್ಮ ಕೋವಿದ ತ್ಯಾಗಿ ಗೇಹಿ ಸೇವ್ಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪಾವನಾಘ್ರಿ ಪಂಕಜ ತಂ ನಮಿ ದೇವ ದೇವ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೇಶ್ವರ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಶೂನ್ಯ ಸೋಮಕ ಸದೀಶ ಭಾವ ವ್ಯಂಜಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪಾಠಕ ವೈವಿಪತ್ತಿ ಪುಂಜನಾಶಕ ಸ್ಯಾತ್ ಕದಾಪಿ ಜಾಪಯಾಗ ಯೋಗ ಭೋಗ ಸೌಲಭ ದುರ್ಲಭ ತು ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಾಗ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭಾವನ ಸ್ಯಾತ್ ಕದಾಪಿ ಜಾಪಯಾಗ ಯೋಗ ಭೋಗ ಸೌಲಭ ದುರ್ಲಭ ತು ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಾಗ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭಾವನ ದುರ್ಲಭ ತು ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಾಗ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭಾವನ According to Swami Vivekananda, anyone can do great and spectacular action when in the glare of limelight. But it is the ordinary actions of everyday life done unnoticed by others that show the character of a person. In this respect, we can say that both Saraswati Naidu and Mr. Naidu were a couple of very noble characters. Anybody who has gone to Dharma with them, he has seen that. As soon as you reach there, usually they went with Mataji, in the, or, or with us afterwards, after Mataji went back in the van. As soon as you unpack, unload everything from the van, Mr. Naidu will take the broom, to clean the front of the two, both houses, because um, there always there will be a lot of leaves. And then the passage between the two houses. And Mrs. Naidu busy making everybody comfortable in their separate rooms, making sure that everybody had a cup of hot coffee or tea, whatever they wanted. <clears throat> she was the mother of the house there. We often read in our read in the paper or here how um, the mother's work is 
unpaid work, unrecognized, and we can see that. Um, nobody noticed how much she was doing there. <clears throat> she was the mother for us in Dharma. It was her house. Once she goes there, it was her house. She was she was the mother looking after everybody, starting from Mataji to whoever, the, even the newcomer, anybody, anybody. She was the mother. And she did that from the time um, they came to, to Sydney in 2002. And Maharaji asked them, would you like to, we are going to our retreat center in Robertson, would you like to come? And they joined. From that time, from 2002 till uh, 20, um, till the COVID lockdown, say 20, 2019. <clears throat> Everywhere, always. And from 2017, I have seen that her health has becoming, uh, she's becoming frail, more and frailer. And I usually, I almost had to fight with her. And don't do this much. She wouldn't, no, she, she will make sure we go for rest and she'll go on doing. No, we had to, I had to reduce her work. I had to, had great trouble. But the full realization came of how much work she was doing there. That is, that came after the COVID, um, the COVID lockdown is over. We went back and she was not there. There's no no mother there. All the work is left for us. Oh, where is the thing? Where is that? How much, what to do? How to light the fire in the fireplace? Mrs. N Mr. Naidu is not there. Which play, which, where is the things are there in the kitchen? Mrs. Naidu is not there. The mother is not there. We were, we were lost children, all of us. Maybe as you know, once the mother leaves the world, the children slowly get used to. You can say slowly we are getting used to after all these years. But still we miss her. Both of them were ready for any venture that we started here. We had started the idea of uh, visiting the nursing home from across the Tapovan fortnightly. Both of them were ready. Came coming um, fortnight, go there, visit them, and spend the time with them, with the people there in the nursing home, reading out to them, uh, feeding them, helping the nurses with the feeding, everything. <clears throat> then, we had the book club meeting. They are there all the time. And another venture we started was before the um, Sunday talk, we decided we'll try to have some live music. Nobody's there, no musician here. And to sing the bhajan, of course, we have got one person to sing, sitting with the harmonium. The person, Mr. Nairo, in her, in his late 80s, no, sorry, late 70s at that time, or early 80s, he's sitting there with harmonium, Mrs. Naidu singing. Anything, every, um, nothing is in, in difficult for them or impossible for them. And not to speak of the Sunday like talks, every Sunday, from 2002 till 2019, they must have missed maybe Maximum 10 Sundays, not more than that. And they were so regular that their uh, absence was noticed by everybody. And everybody would start asking with great concern, what happened to the Naidus? What happened to the Naidus? Poor Naidus, they didn't have any freedom even to go for a holiday or uh, taking on a uh, mother, want, and the daughter wants to take them for a wedding, somebody, no. What happened to the Naidus? Sunday, no, they have to be here. And when Maharaji was in hospital in 2006, oh, we, that was the time we had to see how much they worked. Dr. Vimala Nayanar took the medical, looked after the medical side, everything. And Saraswati Ji was organizing the roster for all the devotees to spend time with Maharaji day and night. And themselves, how many, two or three day, days, a week they were spending time with Mataji there. We have heard so much about uh, from them about how they 
went around uh, traveling with the Swami Shivapadananda in South Africa, Swami Shivapadananda, their guru, and also Swami Nishray Sananda of the Ramakrishna Center in Zimbabwe. And um, they also used to tell us how and they, they used to take the visiting um, monks or devotees to the railway station in Peter Marisburg, correct? To show the place where Gandhiji was thrown out of the tra railway station train. We all know the story how during the apartheid, Swami, uh, Gandhiji was thrown out of the train. And that is the train, that's the place where they were living. So they, they used to take the people to, so this is the railway station. <clears throat> So many experiences of during the apartheid era we have heard, both Saraswati and Mr. Naidu, they're working as a nurse, how the discrimination, racial discriminations. It was it's so wonderful to have them with us here. So we miss both of them so much. We didn't have a proper memorial service for Mr. Naid because it was COVID lockdown time. So we just had a online. So we are, I should say, we are having both together today. And we miss Saraswati Naidu, both of them. But at the same time, I feel happy to think that they are in Ramakrishna Loka with Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother. That's the place we all aim to go. Thank you. Namaste. It's lovely to see you all. The extended family of my mother and father, as I embrace you this morning. Um, thinking back to 2000, the year 2000, the very first time in the hall, when my mother and father came for their first visit um, or to the hall, to, to, master's, to master's home. Um, we arrived my, my husband, Sima, my daughter, Yoshina, and myself. And we were here for the, the first Sunday talk. Um, thereafter, my parents went up to Vivian Vijaya Pranamathaji to meet her, introduce themselves. And we sat in a circle. You know, it's a little bit different now. And we sat in a circle around her. And um, the first thing she said to my parents is, where are you people from? In the most sweetest voice. And... The door was open. The family had invited them in. And that was the beginning of the Australian journey with all of you through Master's teachings and their Sunday um, lectures here with you and talks with you. You know, the saying is that it takes a village to raise a child. But when you think about the aged and the frail, it takes a family, an extended family, which I embrace all of you for being there in those years of telephone conversations, talking to them, embracing them through those years. And in that way, it kept them so connected with Robert's uh, Zoom sessions that kept them really, really connected to all of the talks on a Sunday, um, having, as I said, those telephone conversations with all of you over the years. And we don't have to mention names, you, you know all of you who you are. And it's so wonderful for me to suddenly hear a name like coming in this morning and hearing a name and then saying, okay, now I have a face to that name because I'd heard so many wonderful um, stories about the times that was spent together. And in thinking back to my mother and father, as Mataji said, it's, you can't think of one without the other. It is the collective uh, in terms of their time spent here. So the memories that I would sort of like to share would be in terms of growing up, because you all know their lives here with you all, and in terms of growing up with them in South Africa. And I'd like to share a few anecdotes that um, um, over my time growing up in our, in our childhood home. And I remember one particular from the spiritual side of my parents' lives and our family lives. I remember one particular time, and it could have been 1977, and the Ramakrishna Center in Peter Maritzburg, the roof wasn't up yet on the building. 
and it was a period of Navaratri. And my mother said, um, we are going to host it here at home. All the members, the devotees will come over and we'll have the nine nights here at home. And I remember I was in the middle of my examination, high school examination block. And I said, mom, how will I study? And she said, you will study. You will join the prayer for the nine nights and then you slip out quietly to your room and you do your study. And then I'll come and call you when everybody's leaving and you come and you can wish them goodbye. So I said, okay, fine. And for those nine nights, I joined the prayer. Our lounge room was turned into a wonderful shrine. Um, they had the nine nights, the street was full. The street in front of my parents' home was filled every evening with cars pulling up and people coming in. And during those nine nights, I would, would join the prayer and then slip out as mother advised and go quietly to my room and do my study. And then I'd hear a gentle knock on the door to tell me that all the devotees were leaving and then I would come and say, wish them well. Uh, so the nine nights went on. And I think the idea of the power of prayer does come back to me in that thinking back to that time where at the end of that session, at the end of my exam block, I'd had the best results I'd ever had in my entire high school life and thereafter. So I do remember that very fondly and remember my mother's gently telling me, oh no, you will, you will join the prayer and go to your room and study and, and all will be well. And I also think back to um, Shivaratri was also a celebration time where there was a lot of devotional time in, in Peter Maritzburg in particular. And as a little girl, primary school, I would join my mom and dad uh, go to the ashram or at that time they didn't have the ashram built uh, where they had a, a little office that a, a very kind businessman had allowed them to use to have their what they then called their Thursday classes and then we would gather there on the night of Shivaratri and thereafter every hour proceed to and remember this is apartheid South Africa very divided society but we would go from shrine to shrine around the little town of Peter Maritzburg from the divine life to the Arya Samaj, to uh, various other Hindu organizations that were up that night all the way through to sunrise. And that morning, get up, arrive home in the morning, have your shower and you're off to school that morning. Feeling very elated, firstly, as a, as a young one, that as, as a child, I was up all night and I was up all night and I didn't fall asleep. But when you look back retrospectively, you think about, the power of all of those experiences and what it what it means for you uh, as an individual. So with mom and dad, that was my growing up years and the visiting Swamis that had come across. And I, I do remember very fondly Swami Nisriya Sananda uh, talking to me when I was on the brink of my uh, uh, university studies and talking to me about careers and gently said to me, someone is throwing you golden apples, of course, insinuating my husband Siva at that time, and then saying, but be careful, choose wisely, and let your studies take, take you where they should. Don't let that fall to the wayside. And I remember that and always talk to my husband about it. And we talk about the golden apples that Swami Nisriya Sananda referred to and said, be guarded in how you proceed. Education is important and laid that sort of foundation that that was the most important thing. With regard to my mother personally, um, she was the sixth child of seven children. So a large family of very loving siblings that, that we really uh, felt the love and, and connectedness to them over the years. Um, further to that, mom's career as a nurse um, start, would have started way back when she was uh, in her early teens when her father was ill. I, had, I never met both my maternal uh, grandparents because they had passed when my mother was quite young, um, but I'd heard lots about them over the years. And her father was quite ill. And she said to me how she had put a little bed at the side of his bedside and would look after him at night. So I think the very beginnings of that nurse, the nurturer, the carer had started from, from that particular point in her, in her life. Um, and it never ended. I mean, we would just have to complain about a little ache or a pain at home, and she was there ever ready to try and, and help us out in any situation. But I think in all of that, coming to Australia was a, bit, a big concern for me in terms of they had an established life in South Africa. They had 
they were working in the community. And when my mother said to me, as Mataji mentioned um, at the memorial service on the 31st of, of uh, May, that they uh, would come to Australia, we had to choose wisely the city we were going to because they, they had to continue with their with master's work. And we had a, a container scheduled with our household goods headed for Melbourne. And when mom said that, we had a rethink and rescheduled and said, well, there is a uh, Vedanta Society here in, in Sydney and it just takes us, we'll be adaptable and, and, and sort out whatever we need to. And we redirected and that's how we, we ended up in Sydney. But the original route was supposed to have been Melbourne and uh, we, we ended up in Sydney and we are ever so grateful that we have. So um, I want to, to firstly offer my profound gratitude for the wonderful warmth, love, care, and support that my parents have had over so many years, over two decades here. And two things that I'd like to share from lessons that my parents um, have actually um, left me with. But before I do that, I shared this with Mataji on Friday when I had a conversation with her and I said, um, after mom's uh, memorial service on the 31st of, of May, um, on Monday morning, there was a complete stillness in the house. It was just me and mom's not physically there anymore. We had spent a lot of time together in the last four years, almost 24 hours of, day, of the day we were together every day for the last four years. And there was this profound stillness in the house. And I sat there and then suddenly I heard a slight thud. And um, we have a, a, a puppy in the house and he started barking and I thought, what was the sound? And I walked around the house and couldn't see anything and then walked into my mother's room, which is just left as it is. And then I found at the side of her, her bed, close to her prayer area, she had a little bookshelf. The Daily Thoughts and Prayers book was lying on the floor. And I picked it up and I said, and I looked up and I said, Mom, you're sending me a sign, aren't you? And I picked up the book and I read the page on that day. And for today, I would like to read, um, I've actually left my glasses in my handbag, which I won't be able to read. Um, so I'm looking at what was for today's reading was truth. And that was one of my mother's fundamental things. My father was always about silence in times of strife, observe silence and retreat. My mother would say, in times of strife, speak your truth but once and hold back. And those were the two things that I remember from them over the years and um, um, that, that has dwelled with me tremendously in that silence is the only way to save yourself untold problems by just retreating and truth is important to speak and if you speak it quietly and speak it once, that's all that is necessary. And I will read today's the June 23rd, which is truth. And it says, if certain people tell you not to seek the truth in everything you do, do not heed them, for they are your enemies. They tell you this because they don't live their lives according to truth and want others to do the same. People who are not living according to truth find many different explanations for why their lives aren't bad, but good. The more complicated the life around you, the more you need your intelligence to find the solutions. Truth will be your light. Truth will be your shelter. Seek support only in truth. Truth is brief, lies speak with many words. So I think those were the two sort of fundamental lessons that I have taken out of what mom and dad left with me and it saved me many a hairy situation in life in terms of just adhering to, to, to those words. So of my profound gratitude from my husband, Siva, my daughter, Yoshin, and I, for the loving embrace that you have given both my parents, which, as I said, it takes a family to raise, it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a family, an extended family, to lead and through aged and frailing members of our community and I would say profound thanks for that. And for the many trips to Robertson that, that uh, Robert very uh, lovingly drove mom and dad, picked them up from, from home, drove them there. And we never worried for a second. We knew they were in good hands. It was always that sense of where we knew they were embraced so lovingly and continued the work that they so much enjoyed in their lives. So thank you very much. 
Um, and we offer our profound thanks to everybody, Mataji. Thank you very much for everything, Sarah Mataji, Nikhilap Mataji, and thank you, Robert, very much, and all of you as the extended family. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Marla. That was, was very nice to hear the anecdotes about your parents. And we, we do have quite a few of dear friends of your mother and father who have joined us via Zoom. So please be aware there's a wider circle joining us at the moment. I'm just going to tap in. I had the honour of delivering a eulogy at the funeral, and I'm just going to tap into that, share a bit of that with you this morning, because I think most of you were unable to attend. So, firstly, I, I feel we're all very thankful to Marla and family because these two people who were so dear to us we know they were so lovingly cared for. They had all the security and love you could ever want. Uh, especially, of course, with Mrs. Naidu, who had a few years of great frailty, and especially Mala, giving all that time and energy to care for her. I mean, in general, when you think about it, this is one of the, the great wishes that all parents have that their children will be there for them and they'll care for them in the final years and as their health is failing. And so here's a, a very noble example of that. There's a saying that you can't choose your family, but you, you can choose your friends. And some of our chosen friends uh, are usually the ones who share our deepest interests. And in, so in that way, they, they can become even closer to you than your, your family, at least in, in your way of thinking and your way of life. And that was the case for me with, with Mr. Dyer and Mrs. Saraswati Naidu. They were, they were my, well, I'm, not, I'm going to say in another way, they're, they're like my parents, really, because I lost my parents when I was quite young. So sometimes I thought, you know, Krishna's brought some, parents for me later in my life you know a lot of a lot of what I missed out on I think I, I kind of I've got through Mr and Mrs Naidu that that loving uh, care uh, that the parents show to you and understanding so uh, with Mrs Naidu's passing not so long after the passing of Mr Naidu uh, for me you know it's it's a very treasured part of my life that's now uh, well uh, a very dear memory. And as we've been hearing, and as those of you who knew them, the, the, the Naidus embodied so many qualities that we value, the, that, that sincerity and devotion, the upholding of noble ideals, the fact that you could always rely on them. You don't, you don't meet many people like that. You don't come across many people like that in, in your life. And so taking it to a, a wider level. I, I think it's the people like the Naidus who help to hold the balance in this world, to prevent in this world things tipping over into, into disaster. They, they keep it going, they hold it together. As you heard, there were staunch regulars in our, for attending our, all our talks and celebrations. So we'd often comment, we'd say, uh, when, when they're both unable to attend anymore, we, we'd always tell them, oh, look, there are two seats, empty seats in the hall. We, we see, we see, we, we, we're remembering the, the your physical absence. But happily, of course, we, we, we got to see them popping up on Zoom all the time. So thanks to the technology, keep up that contact. Uh, as Gajah Pranaji was mentioning, they love going to Dharma. They they great sense of adventure. I, I've got to say, a lot of people who we take down there, they kind of it's a bit too much for them. Dharma, it's too wild. They get a bit intimidated. Naidu's just diving in. They're ready. I take Mr. Naidu deep into the bush. I I, I love going and exploring. We've got a lot of 
virgin bush there. And he'd come along with me. We'd go kind of bushwhapping, so to say, cacking our way through the bush to try and find some special places. And he was game. He was up for that. Uh, uh, of course, they, as Gachi Panaji mentioned, they'd come for the book club meetings. And dear memory of that, Mrs. Naidu would always show up with some homemade scones or savouries. So I love that. It's just a, just the fact you'd get that, have that to, to share with everybody. That very, I mean, that very muddled touch. And as we know, she's always cheerful, always this bright smile, always ready to listen. Uh, the way I put it, she was an exemplar and an embodiment of old world decency. That's that's what she represented to me. So it's been a blessing to have her as a friend. And of course, Mr. Naidu, now they're, they're, they're both free. They're, they've moved on from this world and we know they're in a very good place. Now I'd like to invite any of you to come up and share some memories. I met Mrs. Naidu in 2006 after the opening, the openings uh, of the shrine, in the women's um, house. So Gayatri Panaji, um, Pragna Panaji, Gayatri Panaji took Thakur Ma, me, Etu Swamiji, and uh, Betty Buddha, and Mrs. Naidu Christ. We all took the shrine in photos and we went to the other room. I was so happy both Mrs. Naidu was there and Betty was there. And the shrine photos was given to them to take. And we went there. That was the first time I met her. Um, yeah, because I came 31st and 10th, 10th September. And then was not very much acquainted. So Mataji's birthday came, lots of flowers. One big bunch of flowers was there. And I saw the name Dayananda Saraswati. Uh -huh. Dayananda Saraswati. Oh, the founder of that Chinmaya's disciple. Dayananda Saraswati. Oh, how did he come here? Dayananda and small and Saraswati. So <laughs> I took it for Dayananda Saraswati, the oh, yeah, abbot of the Chinmaya mission. Uh, so I always used to make fun. Oh, Dayananda Saraswati. <laughs> it was a nice thing, you know. Dayananda and Saraswati. That was a funny thing about their names. I would make fun of them always. And uh, later on, I used to go with Mataji to help Mrs. Naidu in the kitchen. So it was still, I was not acquainted with the uh, Sydney winter. I mean, Australia's winter, especially there. Robertson is still cold. So one day I was night, I was sleeping, tugging myself tightly, and then somebody brought a nice quilt and spread and nicely tugged. I was feeling so happy. I didn't even feel, didn't have the courtesy to tell thanks because I was enjoying that motherly touch. So I just wanted to enjoy it, not diminish it by saying a thank you, Mrs. Naidu or something. No, I was just trying to enjoy that childhood like how our mother, my mother would do, do the same touch. So it was such a beautiful experience. That's a wonderful experience I remember about Mrs. Naidu. And she had written quite a recipe, few recipes for me. I said always, I know only to cook sambar and things like that. Can you give me some nice uh, dinner recipes? Then first time she gave me something, I couldn't understand what it was, nacho. How to make nacho? She had given. I stayed with me now, and then I see beautiful handwriting. Then Bonapati, it's something she had written. I didn't know what it. I asked. Guys, it's Bonapati. She said, "Enjoy." <laughs> that was another one. And then when I started getting acquainted with them, I would talk many things, though it was not right for me anyway. And then I asked one day, Mr. Naidu, "How did you come to Sri Ramakrishna?" Oh, Mataji, it is Saraswati who brought me. What? Saraswati Naidu. Yeah. When we were engaged, she took me to the Swami and introduced me. That's how I came in contact with Ramakrishna's family. I said, then she's Vidya Saraswati. She's Vidya Sri. You know, Sri Ramakrishna says there are two types of women. Women who draw away them, their husbands from God. 
they would say what sort of a person i am married to he doesn't care for me he doesn't bring anything this sort of thing and there are other women who take help their husbands to go towards god so sri ramakrishna designated them as vidyastri and mrs nandi was one such who first brought her husband to the swamis imagine young couples taking their husband to the swami all renouncing monk so that was it was in her she was spiritual deeply spiritual and she uh that uh, spiritual feeling you could feel it i never felt that she, uh, mrs naidu was uh, just a devotee you know she was so close to our heart and i have never seen her uh, pointing out something we are human beings we are also prone to mistakes mistakes are that she never pointed it out she very very the decency as robert said very courteous very decent she wouldn't say mata ji what you did was not correct she wouldn't tell that many people very frankly tell they speak sometimes they are very uh, hard uh, tongue also they have but not with me it's just like such a gentle and loving uh, person always you feel when when you remember mr and mrs naidu a sense of joy comes into your heart that is the sign of true spirituality and i am very happy that sri ramakrishna brought such wonderful devotees to this place to us where are how many devotees are there in the world like that we do not know but we are really fortunate to have a very devoted devotees of sri ram thank you Um, just to share a few memories. Everyone has um, been saying what's in my heart as well. So, and Gajji Pranaji stole my. Uh, I was thinking, you know, what sums up Mrs. Naidu for me, because most of my experiences with Mrs. Naidu was at Dharma, and that's where I met her and spent most of my time with her. And what came to me was the mother of the house. She was the mother of the house, and Gajji Pranaji. the same yeah so <laughs> um yeah so i think i met uh, mrs naidu at tarama um probably more than 20 years ago and um we would spend a few you know everyone's having a rest so sometimes we would chat and she told me a few things about her uh, her life in south africa just a little um a couple of the things that i remember her telling me was about the apartheid um regime and living under that and how soul destroying that was how crushing how it crushes your confidence and your um how you see yourself that there were certain areas where she wasn't allowed to walk and um yeah so just she told me about that and how that plays out in your life Uh, you know and how she overcame that um and the other thing she i remember her telling me about was her experience um training as a nurse and that seemed to be in those days more like a monastic training it was very um the standard that was expected was really high um and and you had to live in be under the supervision of the matron i guess in a way it's all it was almost like a monastic training um that's how it seemed to me anyway so i think some of those qualities as well as you know the spiritual qualities with that behavior and uh, how to deal with other people and look after others serve them may have come through that training as well um yeah so i think uh, i heard that when mr and mrs naidu came that their history was that they were in south africa and they were very close to the swami there and that they were um very close to devotees who were um you know had offered a lot of service and were really involved with the center and that was a loss i guess for them coming here 
but then uh, that opportunity to be involved opened up here as well. And I could see that that was like Mr. And Mrs. Naidu really jumped into that. Um, and especially at Dharma, when the women's house came, then there was a like a, a big gap so needed for someone to take control of that and to yeah just the small small things of making sure the groceries were there the things were put where they needed to be uh when visitors came that they quietly got to understand what the rules were and how things had to flow so she just very quietly um, just build a big a big gap that was really needed and served everyone through that. So yeah, that was my um my memories of Mrs. Naidu of just her motherly love, her care, and as everyone has said, so quietly doing these things. It's just um, yeah, she's there was no uh just very quietly and unassumingly taking care of a lot of things and really observing what needed to be done. Yeah. And then I was thinking, you know, with Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna's boti, the garden, the, you know, everyone is so different. Um, and that retreat centre is such an important part of, it's a place where, we can come and for a few days, we can be away from everyday world um, and dive deeper into spiritual things and then get to know other people on that path as well in a deeper way. So it's such an important thing, I think, for our society to have that there and then to have the Naidus um, create that space so that that could happen in in a really lovely way it's such a a nice thing and a, a great service so i was just thinking you know the nidus were a bit like a shade tree you know, there's all different plants there that we have and colorful and all of that but they were like this beautiful shade tree that we could sit under and just get that warmth and that love and also if uh, with Mrs. Naidu, if there's any, like you were saying, any inkling of, um, oh, I've got a sore here, you know, I've got a pain here or something's not quite right. She had a lot of knowledge to share uh, about how to fix that and what to do. She had a lot of knowledge about a lot of things, right? the family things, society things. Just, yeah, so we're sharing that as well in our chats when everyone was resting. Nice to have the opportunity to uh, think about Mr. and Mrs. Naidu today and share those few memories. You're welcome to come up. Anyone else would like to come up and say, share a few memories? Being Mother Jesus, Namaste of the family. <clears throat> and thank you, Marla, for those thoughts uh, of your early childhood with Sarasvati. It was very interesting to hear about. I haven't been that close to the Naidus as some of the other people have been. But one thing that I um, that resonates with me is what uh, Madhuji said, that Sarasvati was an honourable person. And that struck me as well. A loving and caring and honourable person. And we can be all very grateful for the times that we shared with her, both here and down at Dharama. And Christine and I would like to um, thank you all for enabling us to have this um, a memorial in for her. Thank you.
Ah, já espero ver. Good morning, everyone. We're here this morning to remember and celebrate the life of Mrs. Naidu or Queenie, as I call her, on her request. On looking back, the name is a reflection of what she is. She was always regal in her manner. She spoke softly and quietly with a very special sense of humor. We were two members of the Vedanta Society who lived close to each other. As a result, I have invited Krini and Daya over to my place for lunch a few times. Once I cooked the Malaysian food for them to try. And the other two times, we went to the Chinese restaurants in Morven. I enjoyed Krini's uh, professional manner and her wisdom and experience. She was never one to impose her views on anyone, but would come out with practical solutions to a problem when asked over a discussion. She always appeared calm, collected, and in control. I attribute that to her profession in nursing. But when it appears that when it appears that Daya was always quieter of the two, I always find something to talk about with Queen. She was good at cooking, and there's a lot of that here in, especially in uh, Dharma. She does a lot of baking too which I do not do coming from a diabetic background. She was, she was what I would call a quiet but caring friend, ready to help if she could when asked. My greatest regret about our friendship is that I had to move far away from her and was busy with grandmother duties. We would communicate over the phone with the help of Mala every now and then, and we would enjoy our catch-up, but wish that we could meet up. We planned to do so one day, but I got sick, and we had to postpone that. Then Mala was unwell, and we could not meet up, and before I knew it, she, Mala told me that she had passed away. I suppose it was not meant to be. But I will always treasure the conversations we had. And that made up for our friendship and the distance. May you rest in peace, Queen, together with all forever. So, all right, well. If there's no more, uh, we'll we'll go through this PowerPoint presentation, which is the first slide is already up there. And I'll just move away. So we've been talking so much about Dharma, and this is going way back. It's one of the early visits. Sorry? Yeah. So from... <laughs> look. <laughs> It's a bit ominous, you know, this photo. There are so many people there who are no longer with us. <laughs> so from left is Umla Mehta, a long-time devotee. She's passed away a couple of years ago. Of course, there's Mrs. Naidu and Betty. And a Prabhupada Kajaya Pranamataji, who founded our centre here, with Daya, Mr. Daya Naidu behind her. Then Brian, who was a long-time devotee, and of course... Very young looking Tony Ripper there. And, <laughs> and then Jim Wilkes, he was secretary of our society for many years. And the Naidus loved him, they, and he loved them. They, they were very good friends. And he passed away sadly too, too early. 
again, Dharma. So you can see a lot of familiar faces there. It's on the way to Dharma, just to visit a Prabhachik at Amala Pranaji, the late Amala Pranaji. She was the general secretary of Sri Sharada Mat for many years, and this was one of her visits. Again, with, with her, we're at Kayama. Here in Vedanta Hall, very happy group of ladies. This one, this one here, if you can see where I've got the arrow, she, uh, that's Dr. Vimala Nayana. She was someone we really miss, and she was a very dear friend uh, of Mrs. Nigel, Mr. Nigel. <clears throat> Again, Dharma keeps popping up, but then, uh, like we kept saying, it's a very central part of our lives, especially when Nidus were there. We tend to go more often when they were, hit, were when they were active. And lots of groups would go down. A bit poignant, this photo. This might have been the last time that they could go to Dharma with Mataji, Ajay Prana Mataji, because 2011 Mataji went back to India. So it was kind of sad, that visit, realizing the last time she was going to be there, coming with all of us. This is the one of the vice presidents of Ramakrishna Order when he visited. And so, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Nadu would never miss anything like this. So there's Mrs. Nadu in the front row right there. Oh, put that in twice. Uh, uh, this is just one of some special little celebration. I'm not sure which, but there's, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Nadu there. And then Alexandra Pranaji, was she then assistant secretary, I think, on this visit of Sharada Mutt. So the big, big happy events we had with her. And of course, there's Mr. and Mrs. Nadu in the back there. Back row, along with so many of our group. And again, uh, on the way or to or while staying at Dharma, Get out and about, so many beautiful places to visit. Well, I don't know why Mr. Nadu looking very serious there. <laughs> Again, Dharma, 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 all different angles and places and groups of people. And there, look, see, Mrs. Nadu in the middle there, when this would be one of our special celebrations when everybody stays for lunch and she'd be right there in the middle of it, helping with the serving everyone. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, so that's it. Service Bay, all right, look, we're on the subject. Let's see, let's see if I can track it down. If you. I was trying to think what year that was. So, sorry. What? Right, what year was that? 19? Nine, nine. Okay, yeah. All right, we'll do a quick search here. We'll, uh, I somehow didn't see that on the way through. Oh, no, sorry, I'm in the wrong year. Sorry, got lucky on two, 2009. Oh. oh, okay, I don't seem to have any photos from 2009. Wait 
That's strange, yeah. The... Yeah, all right, sorry. Um, knock up. So now, now we're going to conclude with listening to a guided meditation by Revered Prabhajika, which I have Just give me a moment to find that I've kept it ready. Whoops. disappeared i'll have to get it back and i think i might just say goodbye to everybody on zoom now because they're not going to be able to hear this